Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your proud host, John Durante, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you today, Ariana Yaritu, who is the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at NYU. Ariana, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much, John, for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for being here. We are delighted to have you. Can't wait to hear all about NYU. So why don't we begin by just asking you, Ariana, how long have you been an admissions counselor and how did you end up in this position? Absolutely. So I've been working in college admissions for the last six years. I started at Vanderbilt University, which is my undergraduate alma mater, as an admissions counselor. I spent my first three years living in Nashville and working out of our office there. And then in 2019, um, I made the decision to move to New York City and become a regional admissions counselor. So that's pretty common in admissions for people to live where they recruit. And so when I moved to New York, my territory became the five boroughs, Long Island and Fairfield County, in addition to some work recruiting internationally as well. So in the past, I worked with students in Florida, in Arkansas, all over um, the New York City area as well as China, Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Um, So right now I'm recruiting uh, for NYU. I started in this office last March, so just finished my first year here, um, working with students in Texas, Oklahoma, um, Suffolk County, which is why I'm here talking with you today, as well as Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean. So lots of of different experiences, lots of wonderful students that I've been able to meet over the last six years. And I'm so excited to be able to talk a little bit about what I've learned in that time. Wow. Well, that is so exciting and interesting and can't wait to dig deeper and dive into all the great things that NYU has to offer. So thank you for that intro, Ariana. So what is it about NYU, both inside and outside of the classroom, that makes it so appealing for so many students to want to apply and ultimately want to attend? Absolutely. So I think that New York University is so unique in that we have sort of a cultural identity, a pop culture identity, you know, people go to NYU in TV shows all the time and in movies, and we very often hear about Gossip Girl, which was admittedly one of the first (laughs) ways that I learned about NYU, and when I was, uh, Gossip Girl was airing when I was in high school, and so it was very much part of my uh, experience growing up. I had just heard from a student this past week who said that they first heard about NYU from Girl Meets World on Disney Channel, so I didn't (laughs) even know that they were talking about NYU there. Um, So NYU really is different from a lot of institutions in that we have this sort of name brand recognition. I think that once people begin to learn more about our academic programs and the offering that we have, it makes sense why we are so heavily featured in uh, different media. Uh, Students at NYU have incredible opportunities. You know, we have our three degree granting campuses in New York City, which I think is what most people think of when they think about NYU. But we also have our campuses in Abu Dhabi and in Shanghai. So very uniquely, we have this global academic network for granting degrees. But then in addition to that, we also have 12 other global academic centers where students are able to study away for an academic year, for a semester. Um, And so having this truly global presence allows our students to have a college experience that is without walls, that is without boundaries, and really allows them to be able to be exploring their ideas and their academic interests and their identities on all of our different global campuses. So studying away is something that is important for you. If you're interested in how people from different cultures come together and what the intersections of these ideas look like, then NYU might be a good place for you and a good fit for you to be able to explore all those different interests. So in addition to the global campuses that we offer, even within the academic programs, we have such a wide range of opportunities for our students. At the New York City campus itself, which is the campus that I work for, we have 10 different undergraduate schools and colleges. So if you are interested in the performing arts, we have wonderful programs within the Tisch School of the Arts and our Steinhardt School of Education, Human Development, and Culture. If you're interested in going into business, the Stern School of Business and the School of Professional Studies both offer different avenues for entering the business world. If you're interested in helping people, we have our Silver School of Social Work or the Rory Myers College of Nursing. Um, And then if you're interested in innovation and, and new thinking, 
the Tandon School of Engineering is wonderful for that and that is unique in that it is housed on our Brooklyn campus. So even within the city of New York, we have multiple campuses and multiple areas for our students to really be exploring. Um, and then we have, of course, have our liberal arts based programs at NYU, the College of Arts and Science, which is the largest academic program at NYU, the Gallatin School of Individualized Studies, which allows students to be able to explore and create their own interdisciplinary program of study that is very, very self-directed and supported by the faculty there. And then we have a unique program called our Liberal Studies Program, which is a two-year opportunity for students to really have time to explore their different academic interests before then transitioning into one of our other academic programs somewhere else within our uh, majors at NYU. And the Global Liberal Studies is a wonderful example of the liberal arts heart of NYU, which runs across all 10 schools, but also of our study away program. So one of the things that I think that if I had majored, if I had been a student at NYU, I would have pursued liberal studies. Um, and I definitely would have opted to spend my first year away. So students doing the liberal studies program can choose to spend their first year in New York City, of course, but also in Madrid, Florence, London, and Washington, D.C. So you have several options there for spending that first year and, and really developing a, a small community before then joining our New York City campus. So a lot of different programs to be able to choose from, a lot of different avenues for taking classes across the 10 schools, for minoring across the 10 schools. You can also pursue a second major at NYU as long as the second major is within the College of Arts and Science. So some academic flexibility there and all around just a lot of ways to be able to explore your different identities and interests and talents. We have over 300 student organizations on campus, an extremely active student body and student life. Um, and then on top of all of those wonderful opportunities, you're also in New York City. Um, so our campus is located in the Greenwich Village neighborhood, one of the most artistic, creative, and just beautiful parts of the city. Lots of wonderful food. We're right around Washington Square Park. Park, um, and Union Square so a lot of opportunities for getting off campus um, because there really is no on or off campus it is all part of, of one big student experience where students are really able to explore and engage and be creative within all these different spaces in New York City um, and our students are taken off campus um, to do different events and to go to Broadway shows together to go to museums together um, and really the city is very much part of our students experiences I think we sort of are the most emblematic of having the city as your classroom and when we were founded in 1831 that was really the ethos to create a school that was in and of the city and we have really succeeded in that over the last almost 200 years well that's a tremendous introduction to make it very clear that nyu truly is a global university with something for everyone and you mentioned the study abroad opportunities i know many former mm -hmm. students and current that have all studied through the many programs that NYU has to offer, um, which are all very exciting. So let me ask, what is the average profile of the current freshman class? Yeah, that is a great question. So sort of when we're thinking about um, metrics, because that's often what we think about when, when people ask us about what that profile looks like, um, for the last year's um, admitted student class of the current first years, our middle 50% um, was about a 1350 to a 1530. So it's a pretty big range at NYU, which I think is really indicative of the pretty big range of academic opportunities that we offer students. Um, and then on the ACT, a middle 50% range of a 31 to a 35. Um, and we very often are asked sort of like, what is, is there a minimum GPA? Is there something that I should be shooting for academically? We do um, typically see that that an unweighted GPA of about a 3.7 tends to be competitive within our application process. Um, we have seen over the last years as NYU's application pool has continued to grow that that is becoming more and more competitive. So really what I've been telling students more recently is that a mostly A transcript is what's going to be competitive for most programs at NYU. And there are there is a little bit of wiggle room just because we do admit by academic programs. So each of the 10 schools has their own 
sort of review process and shaping process that we undergo in the admissions office and within the admissions committee. Um, but to be the most competitive for, for particularly some of our very competitive programs like Stern, like the College of Arts and Science, um, like the College of Nursing, uh, mostly a transcript is really what you want to be shooting for. Another extremely important part of our application review and our understanding of a student's academic preparation for NYU is the rigor of your curriculum. So within your school, there will be all sorts of different classes that you can choose from. And they have lots of different names at different schools. They might be called standard classes. They might be called college prep classes. Um, there might be honors classes, advanced placement, international baccalaureate. Um, you might be taking classes within an A-level curriculum. Or if you're listening internationally, you might have a, a, a standard national curriculum that you're a part of. Um, we, within the office, develop a level of expertise in these different curricula and in these different options that you have to choose from. Um, and we do that in large part by understanding your school and using the school profile to understand what classes are available to you so incredibly important for us is the rigor of the curriculum that you select within what is available to you at your high school um, so that rigor is really important we're really wanting to see students who are in very demanding or sort of most demanding curriculums within their school <laughs> I want to welcome back Sean Patel, who is the founder and CEO of Prep Expert. He's a Shark Tank entrepreneur making a deal with Mark Cuban back in 2016. And he's also a board certified dermatologist who received a perfect score on his SAT. Sean, welcome back. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back, John. So I just wanted to share with all your listeners real quick that we have an amazing partnership with the College Admissions Process Podcast, and we have a really special offer for all of your listeners. So for any listener who wants to enroll their student into one of our prep expert SAT courses, ACT courses, or one-on-one -on -one tutoring programs, you can get 30% off just for being a listener of the College Admissions Process Podcast. All you need to do is put in the promo code College Talk, one word, just College Talk, and that'll give you 30% off all Prep Expert SAT courses, ACT courses, or one on one tutoring packages. Make sure you use the link in the show notes of the College Admissions Process Podcast. Thank you, Sean. We really appreciate it. To our listeners, as an affiliate partner with Prep Expert, I want to be transparent with you that for every purchase made using our coupon code, which is College Talk, the College Admissions Process Podcast will receive a small commission from Prep Expert. But rest assured that we only promote programs that we believe in and feel would benefit our listeners. So whether you're preparing for the SAT, ACT, or need a one on one tutor, Prep Expert has the tools and expertise to help you. For more information, please see the Prep Expert affiliate partnership link in the show notes. And now let's get back to the show. Well, that's great insight. And earlier you mentioned being test optional and how being test optional has certainly increased the number of applications, not only to NYU, mm -hmm. but to many other colleges and universities throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So, Ariana, what percentage of the application pool would you say actually submitted their test scores, being that you're test optional? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, at NYU, this past application cycle, so for the, the students that we have just finished admitting, so a little different from the current first year class data that I just shared, um, for this current people applying for the fall of 2022 application cycle, um, just over half of the applicant pool applied without scores. Wow. And we don't have very... Um, we're still very much figuring out sort of what the testing data looks like for the current new first year class that we're going to be welcoming in the fall. Um, but having that information about the application pool is something that we're, we're happy to share. And just so that you know, as, as you're deciding whether or not to submit test scores, I know it can be very stressful for students and, and making that choice. And it might feel like 
I very often have students asking me like, well, if I don't submit scores, are you going to read into why I didn't submit scores? Or if I don't submit scores, are you going to assume that that meant that I did badly on the test and then you're not going to want me? Um, To be perfectly frank, we don't have the time to do all of that mental calculus (laughs) about why you may or may not have submitted scores. We're just going to look at what you presented at face value and evaluate your application. Um, It is our goal to have... um, an admitted student pool that is reflective of the applicant pool across lots of different metrics, across um, racial and demographic breakdowns, across geographic breakdowns, um, but certainly one of the ways we want to try to ensure that our admitted student pool is as reflective as possible is with that breakdown between the students who apply without scores and who are admitted without scores. Well, I want to thank you for sharing that information, and it's certainly very interesting to hear that Mm -hmm. over 50% of the applicant pool submitted their applications without their test Mm -hmm. scores because I know that there are a lot of students and parents, Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, that are a little nervous about the test optional um, uh, option. And uh, so you sharing that data is certainly extremely helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, even before COVID, NYU always has strived to be very supportive and accommodating of students through the application process. Um, And so even prior to and through COVID. And we also have what we call a test flexible option or test flexible testing policy, which means that we accept things beyond just the SAT or ACT. So um, we accept three AP exam scores as a testing option at NYU. We can accept if you are doing an international baccalaureate curriculum, we can accept your IB predicted scores as your testing option for NYU. So even beyond the SAT or ACT, you have other options that you can consider if you'd like to submit scores. Um, But the information about sort of how much of the applicant pool is applying with or without scores, that's any kind of test score. So that is the SAT, the ACT, three AP scores, a national exam that our international students are participating in, IB scores. Um, So there's a big range of what NYU can accept through our test flexible policy, even as we are also test optional this upcoming application cycle. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's certainly extremely unique information in terms of three APs, the IB scores, in addition to SAT or ACT. So again, Ariana, great insight. Thank you so much. Ariana, when reviewing an applicant's profile, do you use the high school transcripts GPA or do you recalculate the grades using your own metrics? So at NYU, we use something called the Self-Reported Academic Record, or SRAR. This is something that you will fill out using your transcript um, that can help us better understand your academic record and do um, a bit of that recalculation. So yes, we do strive to... um, We do recalculate the GPA just based on the information that you put into the SRAR. So it's not necessarily going to be different from your high school GPA, um, but it will give us that unweighted information. But what's great about the SRAR is that it makes it really easy for us to understand the rigor of your curriculum. So the what it asks you for is the course name, the course subject, and then the level of that class. That's the language that they use, level. So you would input standard class or college prep, honors, advanced placement, international baccalaureate, an A-level class, whatever that curriculum is for you, whatever that class type was, and then you'll input your grade. Um, And one of the other big benefits of the SRAR is that you have the opportunity to input the grading scale for your high school so we can make sure that we understand you know what does an a look like within your context does your school do pluses and minuses is does your school just do numbers some schools are just um some schools will give us grades zero to 100 some schools give us grades f to a plus or a so it just really depends on the context of your school and that SRAR is a really wonderful tool that allows us to make sure that we have that um, clarity around your transcript and what you've done. So yes, we are recalculating the GPA based on what you're inputting into that SRAR, but we do look like look at that in conjunction with your um, transcript itself and also in conjunction with the school profile. So I mentioned earlier that it's really important NYU 
um, for us to understand the kinds of classes that you had available to them and how you did in those classes. If you're thinking about your transcript and that SRAR as sort of raw information for us to understand, the school profile is the key that helps us contextualize that information that we're receiving. So the school profile will list out typically, you know, some of the demographics about your high school, some of the information about what kinds of classes are available to you, what kinds of extracurriculars are available to you. Um, it might tell us information about, you know, the maximum number of AP classes that you can take in a year if there is a maximum. It might tell us information about um, the just different things or different opportunities that you have at your school. All that information can be included in that school, por- school profile. And so it's really important for us to have that piece of um, that answer key, that tool to really be able to better understand your transcript and to make sure that we're correctly interpreting that transcript and interpreting that document for our purposes here at NYU. Great, and I appreciate you explaining the SRAR, which, as you said, is not common in every school, but certainly, mm-hmm. you know, more schools are using it than in the past. So, really appreciate Definitely. the com- com- comprehensive overview of all of that. Ariana, we speak about the middle 50% in terms of the current freshman class's GPA, SAT, and ACT scores. Is there a metric you use to quantify the activities they've participated in? So at NYU, we do what we call a comprehensive review, meaning that as we're reviewing your application, there are multiple factors that we are considering. But to be perfectly honest, the driving force for every application review is going to be the academics, is going to be the classes you're taking and how well you did within those courses. For some programs, your extracurricular activities are going to be important as well. Um, So for example, if you are applying to any of our programs that require a portfolio, whether they're gonna be in the Tisch School of the Arts the Steinhardt School, if you're applying to any of our music programs or our studio art major in Steinhardt, your extracurriculars are going to be extremely important because you're wanting to continue to do those at the collegiate level and pursue those as a professional opportunity. So for those students, yes, your extracurriculars are going to be very important and our faculty members will do a review of your artistic portfolio um, that you upload after you've received your, after you've applied to NYU. And so that, that there it's going to be extremely important. For many of our other programs, it can be a factor, um, but it's not necessarily going to play as large of a role at NYU as you might see at some other schools who do what they might call like a holistic review and that takes more of those factors into account. But it is still important for you to be pursuing things that you care about outside of the classroom um, just because we know from information that we have around student success at NYU um, that Students do tend to be more successful when they are involved outside of the classroom. You will find more joy in your college experience at NYU if you're participating in our student organizations or getting involved in your residence hall um, and, and getting involved beyond just going to class every day. So it is really important for you personally to be pursuing things that you care about outside of the classroom, um, but it's not a big, does not play a big part in our application review at NYU. Understood, and thank you so much for explaining all of that. How many applications do you actually receive a year, and what percentage of those applicants are actually admitted? Mm -hmm. So for this past application cycle, um, NYU as a whole, so all three degree-granting campuses, received about 105,000 applications. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a, <laughs> yes, wow is right. It's, it is a lot to process, um, which I think is part of why for us the academics is really the driver. We are trying to really understand a lot of, applic- or a lot of different applications as efficiently as possible and also as objectively as possible. The academics, while not a perfect objective metric, I think are more objective than whether or not I like your essay or whether or not um, 
you know, what kinds of extracurriculars you are doing. The grades are what they are. Um, and that is a really solid data piece for us to be able to make those decisions based on. Um, so yeah, so about 105,000 applications this past, this application cycle for the entering class of 20 of fall 2022 um, which is about a five percent increase over what we saw last year where we received about a hundred thousand applications um for regular decision the overall admit rate at nyu for this past application cycle was about 12.2 percent so um it was um pretty a pretty selective process and some of our individual colleges had admit rates that were a bit lower than that as well under 10 percent including the college of arts and science the stern school of business and the rory myers college of nursing so there are a, a range sort of of what um each of the the school processes look like but overall um, about 12 percent of the students were admitted this past cycle well we appreciate that data and the insight thank you so much and of course ariana we all know that students apply to multiple schools because they want to have a list of safety, reach schools, and everything in between. However, if they are serious about attending NYU, in addition, obviously, to the academics, which we talked about, what can they do to help better their chances for admission? So at NYU, um you know, within working in admissions and working within this process, people ask that all the time, like, what can I do? What is the secret? How can I, um, how can I get in? <laughs> I think that's, you know, the, the, <laughs> the boil down question, um, which is so hard to answer sometimes because the college admissions process can, is very much an, imperfect system we are all trying our best and trying to make decisions that serve the communities that we work with while also very much responding to what the university or college that we work for expects us to accomplish and expect us to do you know we receive these institutional priorities that um, are going to dictate how we are um, shaping the class that we are admitting um, to any institution that, that someone is working for, but you know, speaking here about NYU, if I could tell you what the the, the secret is to to getting into a, a specific university, I would not have to work <laughs> in admissions or as an admissions officer. Um, but I think that there are certainly things that you can do to help empower yourself within this process i think one of the biggest things that you can really do is to spend some time doing some very honest self-reflection about what it is that you want or that you think that you want um spend some time doing some pretty significant research on on different opportunities that might be available to you and also try to be as honest with yourself as possible around around what makes sense for you personally what makes sense for you financially what makes sense for you academically for nyu sort of how you can really demonstrate that level of of thought or self-reflection um the space is really going to come in the nyu specific supplement so for us we ask you several questions about which are the campuses you're interested in which academic programs you're interested in and we have one essay question that asks simply why nyu and maybe that doesn't feel like a very simple question to answer um, but we really encourage you to spend some time looking through our academic programs looking through the websites of the majors that you think you might be interested in taking a look at our global campus opportunities taking a look at the different kinds of research opportunities you might have access to um, really just trying to help us understand what it is that you hope to gain from the NYU experience and also what you're hoping to contribute to our community as well. I think it is, it's twofold. We are, you're trying to, you're making sure as the applicant that the community that you're joining is going to be a good fit for you. And we are trying to make sure as the admissions office that the students that we're bringing in are going to be a good fit for us as well and are going to be successful and happy within our campus community. So that really is the biggest way for you to demonstrate that interest and that 
um, regard for the institution, um, just being thoughtful in that why NYU essay and really helping us understand what it is that you're interested in and in gaining from from joining our community. Um, we very often get asked like sort of can I can I come for a tour and demonstrate my interest or are you tracking that kind of thing? We do not at NYU track demonstrated interest at any point in our application review process, whether that's during the application cycle or the waitlist process because we get asked about that as well. And that's what we're about to move into just now in the, the coming weeks. But demonstrated interest does not play a role in our process at any point. So don't feel the need to um, like like feel pressured to come up with something to email us about because we're not tracking those interactions or anything like that. But we are here to be able to be a resource for you. If you have any questions about what the academic experience might be like, you're welcome to contact our admissions officers and also very much to contact our admissions ambassadors. We have over 100 incredible current students who can speak much more accurately to what it's like to be a student living in New York City, what it's like to be a student within any of our academic programs. Um, and if you ask about specific opportunities or specific academic programs, we will try our hardest to have one of our ambassadors who identifies with that interest be the one that answers your email. And um, so it's a very intentional communication opportunity there for you through the admissions ambassadors and their email is admissions.ambassadors with an s at the end at nyu.edu and you can also find their contact information on our website broken down by academic program so you can see sort of specifically what students are involved with where they're coming from and if there's a particular ambassador you want to email um you're welcome to do so through that general admissions.ambassadors email address Hey, John, this is Abby from Penn State. Dormify is my go-to for all things small space decor, but my absolute favorite product is their Sutton Charging three-drawer cart on wheels. It is the perfect height for my lofted dorm bed, which adds the extra charging ports to my room, which I really needed. The additional plug-in drawers make my dorm so much cleaner, and it's all on wheels. It's a perfect addition to my room, and I couldn't recommend it enough. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Abby, for introducing Dormify to our listeners. Dormify is a one-stop shop for stylish and functional dorm decor, offering a wide range of stylish and functional products for anyone looking to decorate their dorms or small spaces. From bedding to wall decorating to storage solutions, Dormify has everything you need to transform your living space into a comfortable and stylish home away from home. Use our exclusive coupon code COLLEGETALK, that's one word, college talk to save 15% on most products when you shop at dormify.com or through the link provided in the show notes. Please note that if you make a purchase through the affiliate link or coupon code provided, the podcast will receive a small commission from Dormify. But rest assured, we would only promote products that we truly believe in and think will benefit our listeners. And now back to the show. Well, that's a wonderful overview of what is, in fact, a very challenging process. As you mentioned, there are institutional priorities. NYU gets over 100,000 applications, and there are limited seats. You accept just over 12% overall, Mm -hmm. knowing that there's a yield. Mm -hmm. You accept 12.2%, I believe you said, but you also know that there's a certain percentage that will attend and will not, and those numbers change every year, making the the situation even more difficult for admissions counselors. You you also mentioned the NYU essay, and I love how you talked about writing specifically in terms of what the students are looking to gain, and I think it's very important that you mentioned what you're looking to gain specific to the program you're applying to, but also what you're gonna contribute to that program. Mm -hmm. I think that's just great insight in terms of how a student could help enhance their application in a very difficult process. Again, obviously NYU is one of the most competitive schools with only 12.2% of the students being uh, admitted. So since you mentioned the essay, Ariana, what are some examples of college essays that really stuck with you? Yeah, I love reading essays. I love reading applications overall, I think in part because I'm a very 
curious person maybe is a nice way of saying it nosy is like a not so nice way of saying it but I love (laughs) learning about other people and I love getting these like little peeks into your world for um, you know the time that I'm reading your application I think that the essay sometimes really freaks people out because more than any other parts of the application, that personal essay, while it has prompts, so this is not necessarily the why NYU essay or the why insert other school that you might be applying to, um, thinking about like a personal statement that will go to all the schools that you're applying to. They have prompts, the common application will give you prompts to answer. Um, But even then, it still can feel like something you can take in so many different directions. And taking the time to figure out what that direction, what direction you want to take it in can be very daunting. Um, You know, I am finishing my graduate degree and when I was getting ready to write my Um, personal statement for grad school you know two years ago I was like wow I have so much more uh, empathy for what these students are going through trying to figure out how (laughs) to fit your story into 600 words like how do you how do you do that and I think sometimes people take you know different approaches to that sometimes people will do like a big survey of their life from when they were little and where they grew up and you know where they're at now and those can be good essays if if done well Um, I think that for me, the essays that I have remembered the one, the most, or I think that the, sometimes there's this pressure for people to feel like my essay has to be unique. I have to write about something that no one else is writing about, and I have to, you know, talk about how I, you know, saved somebody's life or, um, you know, had an extreme hardship or or went through something really terrible, which I think is a really big misconception that I try whenever I can to to break down because you don't have to write about something hard that has happened to you you can if you feel that's the story that you want to share but don't feel like you have to put that on paper for someone to read it's not at all an expectation for admissions officers that you're putting that kind of a story forward but people think they have to have these like grandiose example life examples to to write about in their essay And for me, the essays that I remember the most are the ones that are not necessarily unique, but they're the ones that are personal. They're the ones where you really try to think about a part of your life that you hold very dear. So one essay that I love and that I think about all the time, um, I mentioned it before that I used to recruit in Florida, um, and one student wrote about all the ways that mangoes were part of her life. So, you know, her parents had planted a mango tree in the backyard when she was born, and she wrote about, you know, learning to cook and bake with her mother using the mangoes and then taking the mangoes to her yoga classes when she was older and having them be part of her community and how she found community and created community for herself within the yoga spaces and within her yoga practice. Um, so that was something that was not necessarily this grandiose thing. You know, a mango is a, a, a fairly humble fruit, I would I would argue, but the way that she <laughs> talked about it Um, just really stuck with me Um, I read another essay from a student a few years ago um, from a high school somewhere on Long Island who wrote about um, how Smucker's Uncrustables had been such a big part of his life so like these things that are sort of not what you would think about to write about in an essay um, but that were particularly personal to those students is am I realizing now that those are both stories about food (laughs) yes um, but (laughs) It certainly, they stuck with me because of the personalness, the closeness that they that they feel like they, they give you with a student and the ability to really just get a little glimpse into your life and get a little glimpse into way, the way that you think. Um, so your essay can be about a particular moment in your life. It can be about something that has been a constant throughout your life. Um, it can be about, you know, one a particular relationship it can be about your relationship with your family as a whole it can be about um all sorts of different things i think what makes the essays the most impactful are just the ones that feel personal feel like it's really you telling a story that you want to tell and that you feel like has importance to you 
versus telling a story that you think an admissions officer wants to hear. Um, because we we read a lot of those that are the ones that people think we want to read or think we want to hear. Um, and so it's nice every once in a while to have those ones that feel like just you couldn't help yourself from telling it because it's such a big part of who you are. And I think that's great advice in terms of, look, the application has a transcript that has a list of activities, mm -hmm. which certainly gives some insight in terms of what interest a student has. But really, it's the essay that gives the students the opportunity, as you say, to tell their story, not to write about something that they think you want to hear, mm -hmm. but to share something that perhaps shows their character, their personality, what drives them, yeah. what interests mm -hmm. them so that you get a little bit more insight into who they are as a person that you're not gonna necessarily find so easily in other parts of the application. So I really appreciate that insight, Ariana. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I think about a lot and that I tell students a lot is that all the other pieces of the application are like pretty, they're pretty set in stone by the time you're getting ready to write the application. Your grades are what they are your um, extracurriculars are what they are. Your teachers are definitely gonna say about you what they wanna say about you, but your essay you still have control over. You still have space to tell to an opportunity. It's still an opportunity to shape that application. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And another piece of it is actually the teacher letter of recommendation. And I know that many colleges only ask for two letters of recommendation. Ariana, do you suggest that students submit additional letters from outside mentors, such as coaches or advisors from where, you know, perhaps they volunteered in a church or our hospital or, frankly, anywhere? So at NYU, we only require two letters total. So we require one from your counselor and one from an academic teacher. Um, we do ask that that is a core subject area teacher. Um, and typically you want to try for a junior or senior year teacher um, just so that it's somebody who's worked with you more recently. But those are some of the, like the general guidelines that we put out there. So just one teacher rack, one counselor rack. Um, you can submit an additional letter of recommendation at NYU that it's not something that we really encourage. Um, but I will hear sometimes from students who say to me, you know, like, I don't really know my counselor. I go to a high school where my counselor is working with 400 graduating seniors. It's not a very close relationship. I don't feel like it's going to be a letter that is very reflective of me as an individual. In those cases, that's when I do often uh, tell a student that an additional letter recommendation might be helpful just so that we can get another insight from somebody who does know you a little bit more and can speak to you more as an individual um so yeah so those can come from from all the people that you mentioned right a mentor a faith leader a supervisor at a job um if you are um you know doing research or something like that any of those people can provide that additional letter of recommendation a coach for example um all those people can be helpful to give us a little bit more personal insight into you but if you already you know your counselor pretty well you know your teacher pretty well you probably do not need to submit um, any additional letters of recommendation to colleges we we put the guidelines for one teacher rec, one counselor rec, because we feel like that gives us the information that we need in order to evaluate an application and don't require sort of more uh, perspectives on you than that. Understood. And how important is it for potential students to visit campus or attend any of your virtual meets? Again, do you track any of this mm -hmm. as part of the application process and could it help them in any way? So it is helpful to you and that it, absolutely can help you develop a better understanding of our community and our opportunities and you know some of the challenges maybe even that come with you know going to school in the city and what that looks like it's an amazing opportunity but it's certainly a lot to take on as an 18 year old um <laughs> so just just it's but it's 
great for you to attend to visit campus it's great for you to do any of our virtual offerings which we have a really good amount we're starting a really wonderful series this summer as well in june so um, definitely take a look at our virtual events page to learn more about those opportunities um, but it's not something that we're factoring into our application review so um, definitely do them if you're able to. Don't feel pressured if you're not able to. And there are also lots of ways to learn about NYU just beyond what the admissions office puts out there. I really encourage students, if you're interested in a particular student organization or a particular type of student experience, look them up on Instagram. Look up the College of Arts and Science. Look up the Liberal Studies program. Look up um, you know, our student organizations because you'll be able to see what they're actually doing to support students on a daily, weekly basis, much more in a much more unvarnished view than, you know, at coming to our wonderful information sessions, but, you know, maybe not wouldn't be specific to the particular student experience that you are hoping to, to learn more from. So check them out on Instagram, you know, people watch people on YouTube, like there's a lot of different ways to learn about our student experience beyond just what we're putting out there into the internet. Um, but definitely still follow us at NYU. That's our handle on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, all the different social media. And those that content is primarily from our student ambassadors. Um, so you get to interact with our students there. We do really regular um, like student takeovers on our Instagram um, so you can ask students questions there in real time and and get a glimpse into their a day in the life of an NYU student um, and then there are also our specific social media channels for our NYU Abu Dhabi and NYU Shanghai campuses as well um, so beyond just a sort of big general meet NYU page you can also learn more about Abu Dhabi and Shanghai opportunities through their specific social media yeah, and I appreciate you talking about social media, and sometimes we take for granted just how accessible getting to know about different programs, yeah. whether it be a student club, athletics, academic programs. So that's great advice in terms of checking out the social media. So in closing, Ariana, what are the three top pieces of advice you would give students and their parents getting ready to apply to college? I think take some deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this is an intensely personal and intensely vulnerable and intense and intensely public process, right? We're all aware of in this age of social media, people put so much out there to learn about each other on and share so much of their journeys and I think that sometimes that can be like a little bit overwhelming, right? Knowing about what other people are doing, what other people are applying. Absolutely. Remember that this is your process and your opportunity to make a choice for yourself that is going to be pretty foundational, pretty fundamental in your life. The decision that I made to go to Vanderbilt changed my life. 100%. I mean, I don't know that I would be working in college admissions if I hadn't gone there because, you know, I, I got into this profession by being a student worker in, in the admissions office at Vanderbilt. Um, so that, you know, that was a, a life-changing, life-altering, life trajectory setting journey for me and decision for me. And it's really... It can be overwhelming a little bit, definitely, but it also is so exciting. It is this opportunity for you to make a decision for yourself and to decide what kind of a community you want to be part of and what kind of peers you want to you know, be exposed to and what kind of um, academic interests you want to continue to develop and to further. And maybe you don't know what the academic interests are yet that you want to develop. And so maybe you're going to look for a program like our liberal studies program that will allow you that time to be able to explore. Um, so take a deep breath. It's, it's one, it's one day at a time. Um, be organized. Yes. About the different deadlines that you're thinking about, about the different, um, sorry, be organized about the different campuses you're interested in, what kinds of scholarship or financial aid opportunities that they might have, what kind of deadlines they have for admission and for financial aid. Um, so be organized, try to like stay on top of it, but also take some deep breaths along the way because this is a scary process, yes, but an exciting one too um, and one that doesn't always feel 
enjoyable but one that ultimately will lead you to something that is hopefully a really enjoyable chapter of your life but also keeping in mind that like yes it feels huge and yes you know where you go to school can be very um can shape your life but it also is not the most important part of like who you are um call it the on our end you know whether or not we admit a student is not a judgment on their value in the world and what they're going to contribute to the world it is much more a factor of what we are trying to accomplish based on our institutional priorities than what it is that you can contribute so keep that in that perspective as well um i firmly believe that like everything works out the way that it's supposed to and i think that's ultimately true in in the admissions process as well as well um you know there are thousands of incredible colleges and universities that are going to have great majors and are going to have wonderful staff members who want to support you and faculty who want to guide you and mentor you um and so keeping keeping that in mind that even when sometimes decisions might not work out in your favor there's still going to be a wonderful college or university community for you to join to be able to learn from i also think that's incredibly important to be um financially smart within this process and one of the biggest things that I recommend families do is that if you're thinking about an institution um, taking a look at their net price calculator um, to see whether or not um, financially it's going to make sense for you there are so many different terms being thrown around in financial aid right now around being need blind or need aware or Uh, meeting need or not meeting need and what does that all mean the individual financial aid website is going to be your best resource and every financial aid website is mandated to have a net price calculator within six clicks of their page so um, finding that calculator and using that to get a better sense of realistically what you might expect to invest in your education at that institution is really really important um at nyu we meet a student's need um which is really wonderful and exciting that's new for us we started this is our the people that we just admitted is our second class meeting full need um so it's a, a wonderful opportunity for students but that's different from other schools policies um and even what our policy was a few years ago so doing your research to see how those policies have changed um is is really important as well and just being aware um, and then I, I think my, my sort of last piece of advice is really for parents. Um, I am one of six children. I have younger siblings who are one is who is a sophomore in college and one who is a freshman in high school and, um, you know, working in admissions now I am having, you know, to support you know, not having to, but I'm fortunate to be able to support my family so, through some of those processes. Um, but also know that it can be really that as parents, you want to feel like you have given your student the best possible opportunities and supported them in the best way that you can. And I think that sometimes that maybe feels like doing making the road as smooth as possible for your student and i think that this this college application process is a first sort of glimpse in many ways of adulthood for students of of making difficult choices and weighing different choices and so as parents um i really encourage you to to take more of a support role here and letting your students really drive this process because it's ultimately their decision and where they are going to be spending their college years um and it's an opportunity for you to be to you know continue to empower them to advocate for themselves so that when they're getting to this college campus they're already more familiar with how to ask for help themselves rather than having parents still supporting them 
and, and making some of those phone calls or writing some of those emails. So as much as possible, have your student be the one who communicates with the colleges that they're interested in. Um, always make sure that it's the student's emails that we have um, in our system associated with them because you know, sometimes the student will be, you know, we can see the student name and then their email name is very much not the same um, because it's going to the parents. And that I understand that, you know, sometimes students don't always check their email, um, but this is an opportunity where they need to learn the importance of that. Um, so really empowering your student to take the take their reins here and really be in command of their own process. Um and yes, of course, supporting them because um, it's not something that is easy to, it's not something that should be done alone, but making sure that you're, you're helping them to grow here um, as they make this decision. Well, thank you so much for that very comprehensive, open, and honest dialogue. This has been terrific. I'm extremely happy because I know it's going to help a lot of students and their parents as you mentioned, over 100,000 students apply to NYU each year. And so it's just great that you gave of your time and your expertise. Ariana, can't thank you enough. We hope to have you again back on the show soon. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for creating this space for students and families to just keep learning and growing together. I really, I think this is tremendous. Well, thank you for that input. It's an honor to work with you. And we really appreciate your time today. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to tell a friend and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am your host, John Durante, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Cap.